Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Nanomix's channel, Mobile Diagnostics Without Compromise. We always have the pleasure to be joined by the Chief Executive Officer, uh, David, here. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here with you today. Always a pleasure to have you back. There is lots of news going on under the hood there at Nanomix, and I kind of want to break this down in pieces. With first and foremost, Nanomix initiates new clinical study for the ELAB S1 uh, panel. Can you kind of explain exactly what that is real briefly? Right. Well, the critical infection panel, which is also known as our S1 panel, is the key product that we're bringing to the market. It's used for a rapid assessment of a patient's condition uh, in terms of do they have a critical infection or not, and do they need to be uh, treated very quickly, admitted to the hospital, or are they actually okay and they ought to be, you know, more of a wait and watch kind of thing. So the the uh, we we have a we have a trial underway in the UK that has been underway for about 30 days or so, but this one is really significant in Spain. It's being done at a major hospital in Spain with, with a, uh, a key opinion leader about how to diagnose and treat sepsis. Uh, and uh, for those of you who don't know about sepsis, sepsis is a deadly disease and it is really dependent on how quickly the individual gets treated. And so speed in making decisions about the treatment of the individual relates directly to the patient's outcome. So the literature tells us that each hour you wait increases the risk of death of sepsis by 8%. So time is really, really critical. And what we're doing with this uh, hospital in Spain is we're looking at their ability to use the product when patients come into the emergency department and look to have uh, this, the signs or the symptoms of a, of a critical infection. And so we're able to, to deliver in um, about 11 minutes a answer with three different tests, uh, lactate, uh, procalcitonin, and C-reactive protein. Uh, and get that to the doctor so they can make a decision within their very tight clinical decision-making uh, range. Uh, contrast that, for example, if you wanted those three tests and you followed the normal clinical process, it would take you a couple of hours probably to get that, uh, that information. So we're very excited about it. Um, the, uh, the investigator there, as I said uh, earlier, is a, uh, a key thought leader on treating sepsis. So success with him will bring us not only, you know, a good flow of business from the hospital in Madrid, but it will also reach then across, you know, the rest of the domain in the, in the Iberian, you know, peninsula for, you know, potential market. Yeah, this seems uh, incredibly pivotal. And I mean, you guys also received an IVDR certification for the eLab Analyzer, uh, enabling kind of marketing capabilities in the European Union. Do you want to talk a little bit about the marketing efforts and what's kind of involved from uh, the European Union and just the global scale here? Sure. So the European market is undergoing a transformation in terms of the regulations that are in place to sell uh, diagnostic products. And so the the current the current or the past regimen has been referred to as IVDD. It's a directive, and now it's IVDR, a regulation. And so there is a somewhat there's a there's a semantic difference there. But in reality, there was a time based dependency where we had to get the analyzer certified under the new guidelines in order to continue marketing, and we made that. And 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 so now it's. It's clear to be um, to be marketed um, uh, under the new under the new regulations. So that was a little bit of time pressure. Our team did a great job. They delivered on that, and we got our the required approval. What that allows us to do then is to continue to market the family, the product, which is the analyzer plus the consumable, be able to to do that under the current set of regulations to places like the the Spanish. Um, uh, you know, trial that we talked about, their evaluation. Um, we're also working, as I said, in the UK. Um, we have discussions underway with distributors in Ireland, in Italy, Portugal, Israel, um, Singapore, Chile, and the Philippines. So we're beginning to really see um, a strong level of uptick uh, from these from these customers here as we're going out and talking to them about uh, uh, about the product. So 
having that regulatory approval is essential so that we can continue to serve them uh, even legally, right? So it's a, it, was a, it was a real key win for us. Now, I might just ask you kind of a broad view question here that a few retail audience uh, or investors might have on their mind. Uh, what's with the fixation on the global markets, uh, say over the Western markets right now? Because I noticed that your expansion is, is really kind of European, obviously in the uh, other half, the Eastern mm -hmm. side of the world here. Can you have a little bit of insight on that? Sure. Well, it's it's very simple. It's uh, the United States uh, a market is really driven by the FDA and the FDA approval process is is a long one. Uh, and until we get through the FDA approval process, um, we're, we're, we're limited to marketing in in countries that are governed under other regulatory regimes. Uh, so that's that's why we're. Uh, that's why we're, you know, chasing these other other markets. So the idea is build presence, build revenue, build customers, proof of how good the product is, how it fits into the clinical workflow. Do that in the early access markets, which are these European markets. And then we'll have the, once we get the FDA approval, then we'll also have the customer experience to be able to go into the U.S. market with both of those tools, the approval but also the practice that we have and the understanding that we've gotten from the customers in Europe or Asia. And I feel like that kind of delevers some of the risk, uh, as you mentioned, just kind of fixated perhaps just on the FDA and the U.S. markets. But this is an intriguing conversation mm -hmm. as always, David. So I'm going to pass the question off to the viewers at this point. We'd love to know what you guys think about all of this in that comment section below. Perhaps we'll do a, an investor Q&A here soon down the road, but also consider subscribing because as more news comes down the wire, of course, we'll update you here. But on that note, stay cool, stay awesome. And as always, I look forward to catching you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you.